In this exercise, we are going to calculate the density of states for isotropic systems of different dimensions. For the part number one, we're going to calculate it using the free electron dispersion. In part number two, we're going to use the dispersion in graphene around the k-point. So let's start by writing down a general definition of the density of states. A general definition of the density of states looks like this, where V is the crystal volume and the band index k the wave vector and sigma the spin quantum number. Now in the problem set this equation is simplified because we should calculate the density of states for the conduction band and also for the case of uh, spin degeneracy of 2. So we can simplify the equation to obtain the following equation. There's now only a summation over the k wave vector k and this 2 stems from the spin degeneracy of 2. And um, so you can see that the functional form of the density of states depends on the dispersion relation. So um, for the first part of the exercise we should use a free electron dispersion which is given by the equation here. So it's um, proportional to the wave vector squared and it depends on the effective electron mass m star. By integrating over the density of states from minus infinity to an energy E we obtain the total number of states below energy E given by n of E. So from this relation one can directly see the equation which is given in the problem set for the density of states which is that d of E is given as dn of E over dE. So now in order to calculate the density of states we first of all need to calculate this total number of states below the energy E. So we now first calculate the volume per occupied state in K space and there we assume that um, we have a cube uh, with sides of length L. Um, so this is in the end this is gonna be uh, irrelevant for the for the result uh, what system uh, one uses and here we now decide to use uh, such a cube. Um, as you know from um, basic solid state physics um, one can use uh, periodic boundary uh, conditions for such a system which uh, read as follows. Here in this equation kx, k1 and kc are the components of the wave vector and the phases at the positions x, y, c are related by the phases at the positions of x plus l, y plus l and c plus l. So um, from this equation uh, we can directly see that kx, ky and kc have to be given by 2 pi over l times j where j is a natural number, um, so 0, 1, 2 and so on. Um, from this equation here um, one can obtain that um, there needs to be now a single allowed state per volume 2 pi over L to the power of n where this n is the dimension of the system. So now we know the volume per occupied state in K space and now we also need to calculate the total volume of allowed states in k-space. So as we are given a problem set we are dealing with an isotropic system so for 3D this total volume is just a sphere with radius um, k of e. So in 3D we get 
4 over 3 times pi times k of e to the power of 3. And um, for 2d and 1d we get accordingly, we get um, these equations here. So um, we have the area of a, of a circle in 2d and basically a line of length 2k of e in for one dimensional system. So now um, having these uh, two ingredients, um, we can calculate this um, n of e here, uh, which we will do in the following. So um, we will do it here as an example for the 3D case. Um, and um, this n of e is now given as the total volume over the volume per state. So we can use um, the equations given here and here to obtain 4 over 3 pi k of e to the 3 divided by 2 pi over l to the 3. And um, in this equation we can now plug in the um, free electron dispersion which we can solve for k and um, by using this uh, we obtain um, the following equation. The density of states in 3D um, depends on the square root, is proportional to the square root of the energy, which you can see here. Um, we can do it now um, in an analog way for 1D and 2D by using this equation and this equation and again plugging in the free electron dispersion and differentiating um, according um, to, the, to the equation for the density of states here. Um, so by doing this um, we will obtain we obtain um, for the 2D case a density of states which is independent on energy as you can see here and for the 1D case, a um, um, density of, state, of states which uh, is proportional to 1 over the square root of the energy. So you can see for 3D, 2D and 1D systems, we have the different dependencies on the energy. We were also asked to calculate the density of states for a zero-dimensional system. So um, for the 0D system, we can directly use the equation over here such that we obtain d for 0 d depending on energy with this equation star is given by 2 times delta e minus e naught where now this 2 comes um, from the spin degeneracy again. So um, this is uh, the solution for the free electron case. Um, in the second part of the exercise, we are asked to calculate the density of states for the case of graphene. And we are given um, the uh, dispersion relation for graphene, which uh, reads as follows. We have this uh, linear dispersion relation over here, where the plus stems from the valence band and the minus from the conduction band and um, this constant uh, C star um, is called the Fermi velocity and is about uh, 10 to the 6 meters per second. So um, using the um, equations for a two-dimensional system which you can see here and here for n equals 2 and using the dispersion relation we can exactly as for the free uh, electron case before, calculate the density of states um, for graphene and we will arrive at um, the following expression. Here you can see the density of states um, for the case of um, graphene around the K point and if we now plug in that E equals 2m times c star squared, we will get two times the density of states in 2D. 
Um, note that uh, for deriving uh, this term here, one also used that there's an additional valley degeneracy um, of graphene, um, so which leads to a factor of four instead of a factor of two for the spin degeneracy. So we get this two, this factor of two here, and also the factor of two here. Um, so um, you can see that um, basically the charge carriers in graphene, they mimic um, relativistic massless uh, particles. And um, if we go to zero energy, in theory, um, we would um, have um, zero density of states. However, in, in an experiment, one, one has, for example, um, background fluctuations of the potential, which um, lead to a non-zero density of states in um, at, at zero energy.